much. I now recognize Ms. Ross. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you to all of our witnesses for being here. Uh, the Fourth Amendment is supposed to protect Americans against unre unreasonable searches and seizures. However, the Fourth Amendment remains dangerously undefined in the wake of technological advances, and we've discussed that for several hours here. Today, it's nearly impossible to avoid technology and therefore nearly impossible to avoid the consequences of using technology, including the availability of personal data um, get, getting into the hands of interested parties. The Supreme Court recognized this reality in 2018 in the Carpenter case, which found that the government must obtain a warrant supported by probable cause to access cell site location information of more than seven days in most circumstances. In its decision, the court noted that the services, cell phones, um, that are so pervasive and that are, they are an insistent part of daily life and that carrying one is indispensable to the participation in modern society. More recent cases have also extended Fourth Amendment protection to personal data. Earlier this year, Judge Hannah Locke um, ruled in the Chatry versus U.S. case that law enforcement's use of Google location data to find people near a scene of a 2019 bank robbery violated the protections guaranteed by the Fourth Amendment. She noted her deep concern that current Fourth Amendment doctrine may be materially lagging behind technological innovations and emphasized the analysis of geofences does not fit neatly within the Supreme Court's existing reasonable expectation of privacy doctrine as it relates to technology. Notably, both the Carpenter and the Chatry rulings highlight the fact that users often do not consent to the surveillance they find themselves under or they consent once when setting up their accounts without recognizing the amount of personal data that can be accessed from their phones for years to come. While some laws, including the Electronic Communications Privacy Act of 1986 and the Privacy Act of 1974 um, have attempted to provide some degree of protections and we have had some later attempts, um, the late last attempts are older, include loopholes, and they allow government authorities to buy, buy private data from data brokers without a warrant, as we've discussed. We clearly need a better understanding of the extent of Fourth Amendment protections in the digital age and new standards for ensuring consumers comprehend how their data can be used. Um, I'd at, like to ask, I know we only have two minutes left, each of our witnesses um, to say what one change they would ask Congress to make in evolving Fourth Amendment jurisprudence that would make a difference in the daily lives of our constituents. And um, I'll start with Ms. Goyatin, um, since she looked like she was thinking, and then we can move along the way. I'm conflicted. Do I have to pick one? Well, I I'm sure somebody will pick the other one. <laughs> There's the long term and the short term. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I, I'm fighting two, the premise. Two, okay, ahead. in the short term, Congress should pass the Fourth Amendment is not for sale act. That will go a long way toward closing the loopholes in existing laws, and those loopholes are what are allowing the government to buy its way around the Fourth Amendment. Uh, then I would, or actually, frankly, at the same time, I would begin the project of uh, comprehensive data privacy regulation because we need it. We need laws that limit uh, what information companies can, can collect, how long they can store it, who they can share it with, and what consent, kinds of consent they need to share it. Okay, Chairman Goodlatte. Well, uh, following along the lines of uh, protecting our Fourth Amendment rights, uh, I would <clears throat> call attention to something we haven't talked much about here today, and that is uh, the fact that when uh, the FISA court uh, issues warrants uh, allowing for the surveillance of uh, various parties that are brought to the attention of the court, um, almost always there's only the government there making the argument that uh, they should have the opportunity to do the surveillance. I think there are a number of circumstances, particularly when uh, civil rights, religious organizations, political campaigns, and other important things are uh, being uh, involved in surveillance, that there ought to be somebody not representing the, the target of the investigation, but somebody representing the public's interest 
in protection against unlawful searches and seizures. Uh, I know you have taken an interest in that legislation. Congressman Stewart has. In the Senate, it's known as the Lee Leahy or Leahy Lee mm -hmm. uh, amendment that was offered to FISA a couple of years ago, and I think that would be a very important uh, contribution. But I agree with, with Liza. Number one right now would be to pass the Fourth Amendment not for sale. Um, it's up to the chairman whether the other... A brief answer by the other witnesses, please. Sure. Um, in addition, of course, to everything that, um, that Chairman Goodlatte and Liza just said, um, I'd also uh, ask everybody to take a look at the Privacy Act of 1974. I'm an administrative law professor, so everything for me goes back to administrative law. But that law is actually based on something called the Fair Information um, Practice Principles, which, uh, which give a lot of kind of due process requirements um, like transparency and notice and cons like consent requirements before massive data collection happens in, by the federal government. Ms. Wexler, short answer. Thank you. Require law enforcement to obtain exculpatory evidence on behalf of the accused if defense counsel is unable to obtain it directly. This is a much bigger problem now that law enforcement is getting so much more data from the private sector rather than seizing or searching it directly, in which case law enforcement would, in the process of collection, gain exculpatory information about flaws in the data or the method. Uh, but if they buy it from the private sector, they don't get access to those flaws. And so Congress should impose some obligation on law enforcement to gain possession of exculpatory evidence and hand it to the accused. Mr. Tolman? I agree with the FISA reform, the warrant reform, and the privacy reform. And I would add that you empower this, the, um, solicit, the uh, sorry, the <clears throat> inspector general over DOJ with more authority and capability to go after abuse uh, when it occurs. Thank you, Mr. Chair, for your indulgence. I yield back. Thank you.